Live streaming is one of the most powerful ways to create content. And here at Think Media, we've seen dramatic results growing our YouTube channel using the power of live streaming. And you've probably been looking and scouring the internet, trying to understand how live streaming works. And especially with all the confusing gear, software, and settings, I don't blame you. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to step-by-step -step easily set up a stream like a pro using StreamYard. You gotta just press record. Hey, I'm Tony with Think Media, and on this channel we do tech tutorials, gear reviews, and live streaming videos just like this one. So if that's something you're into, make sure to subscribe. Also, down in the description below, you're gonna find all the time codes for this video. So you can jump to a certain part if there's a question you have and you need to get that answered. And a big thanks to StreamYard, which is the sponsor of this video. It's our number one solution for streaming to YouTube and Facebook here at Think Media. It's the easiest way to have professional looking streams that are highly interactive. You can use it to bring on live guests or stream across multiple platforms. So if you want to get started today, you can click the link in the description to get $10 off whatever plan's best for you. Now let's jump into StreamYard. So once you sign into your StreamYard account, this is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna see on the left-hand side here, we have a broadcast tab, which is the one that's showing right now, and we have a destinations tab. And this is where you're gonna see all your different destinations you want to stream in. Um, for us, we have quite a few Facebook ones, we have a few YouTube ones as well. And this is where you're gonna first add your destination. So you can click here, add a destination. You can see you can do Facebook pages, Facebook groups, Facebook profiles, LinkedIn, YouTube, Periscope, Twitch, and even a custom RTMP. Now this only comes with a basic or the pro um, package. So if you're using the free one, you won't have this option here, but it's a great option if you need to stream to a custom place with like a custom stream key or custom URL. And if you want a deeper dive on how to live stream to YouTube using StreamYard, we did a dedicated video to this because there's a couple settings you have to do inside of YouTube itself. And so if you want to check out that full deep dive, you can click on the card on the screen or check the link in the description below. But I have all the destinations I want to add. So I'm going to go back to this broadcast tab here. You're going to create a broadcast. And this is where you can select where you want to actually live stream your video to. I'm going to live stream into one of our Facebook groups here. It's the Video Ranking Academy members only. And this is where you put a title. You can also put a description as well. And this little box is really important. If you want people to be able to see their pictures when they comment on things, you can pull it onto the screen of the live stream and you can show their comment. Like if they ask you a question, this is a really important thing to have checked because they can see how to give StreamYard access to their Facebook so that they can see the little avatar. It creates a really engaging stream. So I just encourage you guys to keep that checked. You can also schedule for later, which is great if you're planning to go live a little bit later in the day. It's also a great way for Facebook to already be promoting your live stream before you go live. And so I'm gonna leave this unchecked, but this is where you would um, upload a thumbnail, put the start time and all of that stuff as well. Once you create the broadcast, you're gonna see it's gonna pull up your webcam. Hey, how you doing? Um, you can also have some control here with muting your mic before you enter the room, which could be helpful if you're coming into a stream that's already going. Um, you can also stop your cam here. You can see that um, you can have a little avatar picture. You can edit that avatar. You can upload a photo if you want to. Um, but for us, we're gonna leave the cam on here. And then you can also adjust your settings before you enter a live stream, which is really important. So if you click on the little settings wheel here, you can see where you can select your camera, which is right here, the C922 Pro Stream Webcam. That's the one I'm using. But there's all those different softwares and capture card things you can do as well within StreamYard. And if you click on the show advanced, you're gonna see camera resolution. This is really important to make your stream really look great and make sure your webcam looks great, is always, if you can, select 1080p especially if you have a decent internet connection, it's just gonna make it a better stream. It's gonna look clearer as well. Going over to the audio settings, you can see where you can select your microphone. For me, I'm using the Yeti X right now. And you can see even the levels that are coming up right here. And you can see um, kind of what you're looking at. You just make sure that you're not, don't wanna be on the like full all the time. If you kind of peek there once in a while, that's totally fine. But you can see a quick representation of how your mic is sounding. This is also where you select the speaker of where you want your audio to come through, your guest's audio to come through really. And you can even test it right here to make sure you have the right things selected. Underneath here, this echo cancellation is a really, really great feature that StreamYard has. This helps to make sure that if you are playing back a guest through a speaker, that it's not coming back through your microphone and echoing. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that, but uh, it's pretty distracting in a stream. And so this is a great thing to keep checked. Um, unless maybe you he have headphones on or maybe some in-ear monitors. Um, so if you uncheck it, you also get the option for stereo audio. 
Now this is great if maybe you have a music stream or you need, there's some kind of reason you need the left and right stereo experience for people. And so that's just a great option that Streamer has there for you if you're doing like a music stream or whatnot. But for me, I'm gonna leave the echo cancellation on for now because it's just a normal live stream. The next setting I really love is this automatically adjust mic volume. If you check this, you don't really get any options, but if you uncheck it, you can see here it's in beta right now, but you can adjust your mic volume custom right here within the browser, within the settings, which is so important for having a consistent sounding stream and to really take it to the next level. The last setting we have here is for green screens. Now, I don't personally have a green screen or a blue screen behind me, but if you do, this is a great spot to come and swap out your background. You can see here under this virtual backgrounds that there's a brick option here. There's this kind of like cool looking house and you can even upload your own backdrops. Then you would just select what color you have behind you, whether it's green or blue, and you can even fade it up and kind of play with the setting. I mean, it looks a little weird on me because I don't have a green or blue screen, um, but you can kind of play with it there to dial in the perfect green screen setting. Once you have all your settings dialed, you can enter the broadcast studio and it's gonna bring you to a window like this. Now that I'm here in the broadcast studio, I'm gonna hover over my little thumbnail down here and click add to stream so you can see me on the big screen here. Hey, how you doing again? And we are going to look at the tools that we have here on the right side of the screen and what you could possibly use them for as well. The first tool here is comments. Now this is where you're gonna see your live stream chat pop up as people are watching your stream. You can also click on those messages and add them to your overlay so people watching can see them, you can interact with them, maybe they have a great question, maybe they're complimenting you on how amazing your stream looks after watching this video and uh, they wanna let you know. And so you wanna click on those to put those on the screen and then you click on them to take them off the screen as well. Such a great tool, super useful. The next one here is banners. Now we love using banners here at Think Media because it's a great way to ask your audience a question. It's also a great way to give a call to action to people. Maybe you want them to go click a link. Maybe you want them to go check out your course, your video, anything like that. And the best way to do it is you can just type it in here and then what you click on is show and you can see right here, like what was your aha moment from today? We'll ask that on a lot of our streams and just to get some engagement in the comments. The other things we'll do, like I said earlier, is give call to action. So wanna learn how to grow on YouTube this year? Watch our free YouTube web class here at thinkmasterclass.com. So just a couple ways you can use this banner. It's also a great way to maybe if you're teaching, you can add points. So I've, I've done it before. I've been like, number one, set up videos. Number two, answer a problem with a product. So it's just a great way to give a visual aid to what you're talking about natively within StreamYard. The next tab here is our brand tab. What's great about this is that you can create a brand look or a brand feel, and it's saved within StreamYard across all of your streams. So for us, we had a brand color here that we put in, we picked, and this color shows up on the banners, on-screen comments, and display names. And so that's just a great way to brand those things with a certain color. You can also put a logo here. As you can see, this one right here will show if you have the free plan. It's gonna always be watermarked there on the top. Um, but we have our own custom ones, whether it's a black Think logo or a white Think logo. And it's just a great way to brand your stream because here's the thing, when you have a stream, a lot of times what we'll do here is we'll cut that out and put micro content on it. And now because that logo is right here, you can actually see that even when you take clips out of it and you post it on Facebook or on Instagram, you're gonna see that logo and it's gonna help brand your different clips that you're gonna pull from your live stream. The next section under here is the overlays. Now you can see right here that StreamYard provides a couple overlays. You can put, you know, live with, live with StreamYard right here and StreamYard live show. Um, we haven't really utilized this much, but it's also the way that you would put images on the screen. So if you can see here, we were talking about, you know, Heather Torres on our team is building an RV. So there's an RV picture in here she was using as a visual aid. And that's just the way that you're gonna put images baked into StreamYard is through this overlay function. And so it's really important that you make them widescreen if you can. If you notice here, this actually just covers me. So there's actually still stuff behind. Um, so do your best to use kind of widescreen images because then they'll take up the full width of the screen. The next section here is video clips and we love to use this in a few different ways. We like to have a pre-stream countdown timer in there. We love to run ads in there or even just video clips in a teaching illustration. We'll most of the time upload into StreamYard to make sure that it's just a smooth experience and the video plays back great. Now there's a couple limitations you gotta be aware of at the time of recording this video. Um, you can see here if you hover over this question mark that 
The max video length is five minutes, max file size is 100 megabytes, and it recommends that you have a 720p video. And so just make sure to follow those requirements and then StreamYard will accept your video and you'll be able to play it on your live streams. My pro tip for you here is, especially when you're on Facebook, is to use a live stream countdown timer. It's so great because it gives people time to get into the live stream so you're not just starting with nobody there. And so I really highly recommend that you upload one in here in a StreamYard and you're able to use it with your live streams. Now, if you're already going, I'm overwhelmed, Tony. I don't remember all this stuff. How am I gonna remember all this stuff when I set up a live stream? Well, you can actually pop down into the description below and we actually have a live streaming checklist for you that you can use every time you're gonna go live to make sure that your camera's looking great, your audio sounding great, and you have everything you need for your live stream before you hit that go live button. The next section here is our backgrounds. This is another area you can upload custom backgrounds. And you can kind of see here that you can have different kinds. You can have the leaves, or I'm gonna take myself off here so you can see you can have the leaves background, you can have a black background. We uploaded this blue one because we felt like it was just kind of the best background that we could use that wasn't super distracting, but gave it a little bit of depth. Where you're really gonna see these backdrops is when you have a guest in here with you as you're interviewing somebody or if you're sharing your screen. So I'll show you what that looks like right now when you share your screen. And I'm gonna select this Facebook thing and you can see this backdrop will pop up around my webcam here, as well as behind the screen that I'm sharing. The last option here is you have a quick toggle for showing display names or not showing display names on you or the guests that you have on the stream. The next tab here on the left side is private chat. Now, when you click into here, it's actually a spot you can have a private chat with the people that are on StreamYard with you. You can kind of just type in here and hit enter. We use this on our live streams if we need to communicate with each other while things are live without having to talk to each other. But also it's a great way if you have guests coming into StreamYard and maybe you're doing like a Q&A, you can actually talk to them ahead of time or have somebody else in the back end talking to them, asking what their question is and letting them know when they're coming up on the live stream so they're fully prepared. The last tab over here is settings. Now you might be like, Tony, we just went over settings like a few minutes ago. Well, there's another tab that opens up here when you're inside of the broadcast studio, it's general settings. And you'll see here that there's a broadcast quality selection. Now, if you don't have a professional plan right now, you can't do 1080p, but it's just a great way to make sure if you do have that professional plan, how to get to that 1080p quality. You also have some little settings like you can shift videos up for comments and banners, which basically means when a comment goes on the screen or you put a banner, it kind of shifts things up to make it more readable for your viewers. So I highly recommend keeping that checked on. And your audio avatars are what we looked at earlier where you know you have a picture of you instead of your webcam or instead of your video, you can enable or disable those here in this setting. Now, before I jump into these last couple of things you have to know about StreamYard, make sure to let me know in the comments down below, do you have any questions about StreamYard? I'd love to be able to jump in there and answer anything you might be wondering about the different plans they have or how to use it best when you're live streaming. One of the things we love about StreamYard is how easy it is to run when you're actually live. Now, what I mean by that is how you can change scenes between a screen share, then maybe you wanna go 50-50 with you and your guest, then maybe you want the guest to be full screen. You can do that all in StreamYard with one click of a button. You can see all the different logos that are right underneath this video right now, and I'm gonna walk you through what each of those does. The first one gives you a full screen person, just like you're seeing now, and just like how the logo looks. The second one is actually gonna put you and your guest 50-50, right down the middle, okay? So it's gonna fill the screen. It might have to crop in a little bit if you're shooting on a webcam like this, but this is a great option if you have somebody coming in from their cell phone and it's a vertical phone, you can actually see it full screen 50-50 like that, and so that's a great option. The other great option for another guest is if you have two people on webcams like this, is the one that's right next to it. This puts people side by side so they can both see each other. You can see the names. It also gives some room underneath the videos to put any banners you wanna put up or maybe some comments from the viewers. It's a great layout. It's one of our favorites that we use here on Think Media. You also have the next one, which if you have like three guests, you can have one person be highlighted and have two people smaller. So maybe you're doing like a panel live stream and you have multiple people talking, you wanna highlight and focus on one person, but also see the reactions of the other people on the stream. This is a great layout for that. Um, the next one is our, a screen share option. You can have yourself be big like this and your screen little. So if you have like a big slide or maybe you have like, you know, something you just wanna quote, you wanna share with people, this is a great layout for that because the screen isn't huge because you don't need it to be. And it also keeps the engagement on the video on you while you're sharing your screen. 
The next one is the one I showed earlier is you can have a screen share with you on the side small. Now, if we had multiple guests here, it actually stacks us up on this left side of the screen here. So you can see multiple people while you're sharing your screen. Um, the next one here and the last one is a full screen screen share. Full screen screen share, I think that makes sense. But basically you can look at your screen full. If you're also trying to play a video from a screen, it's actually a great layout for that. So if you're trying to show like, oh, look at this video online, you can just do a full screen reveal of it. Um, but I'm gonna click back to the full screen now so you can see me, hey, I'm back. And so that's the best way to navigate your stream live. Those buttons are gonna be where your, where your mouse lives when you're live, okay? You can just control your different angles, really easy, one click of a button. Again, other streaming softwares make this a lot more difficult. That's what I love about StreamYard is it makes it really easy to have a high quality stream. In addition to those scene controls underneath that, you can see where you would mute your mic. You can see where you can stop your cam down here. You also have that same camera and microphone settings that you saw when we came into the broadcast studio. So if you wanna change some of those things, once you got into the room, you can do so. This is also the place where you will share your screen. So I have my screen share right here, but if I stop my screen share, you can see I click here and it gives me options. Now, what I love about StreamYard too is that you can actually share your audio from your computer. So you're trying to play a video, the people that are watching can hear the audio with it. You can also just do an application window. You can do different, you know, if you have different internet browsers or you have different softwares, you can just share from those softwares directly. And then also what's great is this Chrome tab. This is the one that I probably use the most because a lot of times I just wanna share one tab that I'm trying to show something off on. So I'll just click this Chrome tab and I'll click, you know, maybe this Facebook thing like I did earlier. And then you can click share audio here as well to like share if there's like a video audio or any kind of music and you can just click share, boom, pops right up. And you can see right there that my screen share comes right into the screen as soon as I share it. The last option here is invite people. This is how you're gonna invite guests. Now, if you click on the invite button, you'll see right here that there is a link here. You can have up to 10 people on screen at once. I believe that changes depending on what package you have. You can even send a Gmail email, uh, an email or a messenger, and it will give some instructions as well for the guests to know how to best utilize being on a live stream with you. And you just copy this link, copy it to the clipboard and you can send it. That's also what we put in our chat when we want people for Q and A to come in. That's the link we'll drop. And so people can come and you can see them in the back end here, kind of by down here where my, look this way down here, where my little thumbnail is down here. They'll show up more people back there and then you can bring them onto the stream one by one. And when you're ready to start your stream, you can actually click on the go live button on the top right and it'll instantly send it out to the different destinations you already selected earlier in this process. But I wanna give you three tips for doing maybe your first live stream or maybe you've been doing it for a little bit and this will just help you upgrade your stream and make it even better. The first tip I have for you is to share your screen before the stream. Let me explain why. So when I share my screen here in StreamYard, and I go to this Chrome tab and select it, it instantly puts it onto the screen. Like it instantly puts it onto the live stream. So if I'm already live, if I wanted to like make sure to bring it up, it, it, it instantly goes out. Now you might want that in some circumstances, but I personally prefer having control over when it actually goes to the live stream. So if you see like this and share your screen like I did just now, before you go live, you can actually hover over the screen down here and click remove. Now it's not on the screen, but it's still here in the backstage of StreamYard. So I can bring it up whenever I want. I have more control over when people are seeing my screen share. The second tip I have for you is something I mentioned earlier in this video, but make sure to have your comment tab open when you're live streaming. This is a great way to see who's in your live stream chat and how you can engage with them. Maybe there's a great question in there. Maybe there's a great comment in there that you can engage with. You can bring it on the screen and make people feel like they're a part of your live stream, a part of your show. The next tip I have for you is to make sure you have a countdown before you go live, especially on Facebook. Facebook, it's so important to give people time to get into your stream. It's a great way to build anticipation and gather your audience before you officially start your live stream. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna check out that StreamYard to YouTube video, you can click or tap on the screen, or if you wanna check out some of our best cheap webcams to use for live streaming, you can click on the screen as well, and I'll see you in the next video.